And today is Tech Friday. Yay! Tech Friday. Awesome. First thing we're going to talk about is the Atom Multistream plugin. And boy, do I have a lot of links for you around this. I've been using it for a couple days now. It's how I've been streaming. Now, Atom makes a bot called Atom. Kind of competes with StreamerBot in that space. But they also do Atom Vertical. So if you want to stream vertically or record vertical streams for later uploading, you can do that. But here is their latest, the multi-stream plugin. You go to their website, download the installer. The installer just goes for you. And then when you open up OBS, you'll have the option to set up a new dock, which looks something like doo -doo -doo, that. Yeah. So, and if you don't see it, you can always go to docs in your, OB, in your OBS menu, and there'll be one called Ada Multistream. And you'll ha always have a built-in stream up here, and this is your default stream. Whatever you've already set up in your settings in OBS will be this first thing. Now, uh, I've had it recommended that you leave this as Twitch, and that will allow you to use the multiple audio sources for, for the other things. So, to add the other things, and then, by the way, this, so I'm streaming both to Twitch and my YouTube horizontal, as you can see. And so instead of hitting the start recording button, or start streaming button in OBS, you'd go to your dock and click this button to start you got to start your built-in stream first, and then you can start the other streams. Uh, because right now, the, the way I have it set is that this stream here kind of piggybacks onto the Twitch stream. Here, so this needs to be on, and it goes, oh, you want me, you, you want me to use all the settings you have here to go out to YouTube? Okay. I'll do that. So to do that, you have your option to set these up. You have your options down here. You have Atom Multistream settings, can support, or the Atom.tv thing. So you click this, and it puts a window way on the other side of everything. Let me go grab that. Why it doesn't come over? I don't know. There we go. Okay, so you get this window here. Let's big in a little. And so it'll open up. You have your main outputs, your vertical outputs. Uh, so using this, we need to start recording separately, then click these in sequence to start streaming. Clicking this replaces having to click start streaming on uh, nor normally in OBS. So as soon as you click this, your, your uh, start streaming button will light up. And since I have the re recording uh, assigned to going, it, the recording will start up too. So your normal, you click this, and basically your normal startup sequence for streaming happens. So th this kind of replaces the, the start streaming and start recording button uh, buttons in, in your control settings. And then you do have to click uh, the other ones to stream to that too. So you cl click this to start up as normal, and then you have to click this on if you want to start streaming on YouTube as well. Right now, there isn't sort of a I start streaming here, also turn on this uh, stream as well option. You, you do have to click, click both of these. But if you have your recording set to start as soon as you start streaming, that process will be the same, as long as this is your main built-in stream. All right, now let me get that window back the gears because it's annoying and doesn't want to stay where I put it. All right, so you click the gear. You're invited with this. Again, help if you need it. Uh, if you want to know more about Atom, right there. The so main output or main canvas. And because this, these settings are all handled inside of OBS already, your built-in stream is just your OBS default, so it doesn't give you any options around that because you set them all up 
in OBS when you do your settings. But for my YouTube, because I did horizontal, I clicked add output and you get this handy menu and you can select Twitch, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Trovo, Twitter, Kick, or another service that does RTMP, right? And then you can, you can name it whatever. You probably want to keep this at the first one. And then you add your uh, YouTube stream key. If you don't know where to find it, they give you a link that will take you right to your YouTube dashboard. Let me, let me turn myself off a second here. So yeah, you click add output and then you get your video settings. So my video encoder, I've set for my main encoder. So whatever I've told Twitch to be here, whatever you tell your built-in to be, that's what main encoder means. It'll go, oh, you want me to do, uh, you know, your 1920 by 1080 at 60 frame per second using this many kill. That's, this is the video you want me to send to YouTube. And that's your Twitch stuff. I understand that. And I'll just boom. Now where this comes in handy is if you don't have a large amount of internet, this will take less of your internet bandwidth if you stick with the main encoder settings because this is unlike Restream where you're sending a signal to Restream. You're sending a signal to Restream and Restream is going out to all those other services. Uh, this is all from your machine. And so uh, how, many thing, how many streams you can have will depend upon your internet bandwidth. Uh, but if you want to stream to two or three platforms, just use the main encoder and have it piggyback and you'll use less of your bandwidth. But if you do have bandwidth and you want to use more of it, Go back to the window here. Real easy to do. Video encoder. You choose whatever one of these you want. And then you'll get all the, all the settings options for that. And it'll, it'll look normal. So if I were to go to, oh, send this. And now I have all these options. My bitrate control. Rescale, right? And now I can set all this all these options, if I wanted to send a higher bitrate signal out to YouTube or out to another stream, I could, if I have the bandwidth. But I don't want to do that right now, so I'll just stick with main encoder. If you have uh, NVEC here, you also should be pretty good in sending out other streams if you don't want to use your main encoder settings for whatever reason. And then in your audio settings, uh, well, you Always set your bitrate to three, audio bitrate to 320. Just do it. Why, it. why it's lower, I don't know. But set this to 320. And so, as you can see, I have a couple choices here. I just do F, FFmpeg AAC. And then, because my main encoder goes over my uh, audio tracks I have in OBS, I can set this to any of the six. So if I want the same track as my Twitch VOD track, I can now select that. Now it's my understanding that you have to have your Twitch as your built-in stream canvas in order to be able to separate these out like this. Um, but that could have changed in an update, something like that. But uh, because there's been two updates uh, since this has come out. But when you go to the go to download button, it, you'll always download the latest version so yeah, and then if you want to get rid of it, just click remove. Again, output settings, you can name it whatever you want. Make sure you click save output after you input your key. And then you can do the same for vertical canvas and all of that. And if you want to know about audio tracks in OBS and making multiple, I, I happen to have a video on that. It's amazing. It's almost like I, I planned this. So go there and find out all about the audio tracks that you can use in OBS. And what the hell it means. It's a, another Tech Friday. It'll be spectacular watch because I made it. So of course it's spectacular. Why wouldn't it be?
All right. So if you have any questions on this, that's fine. Again, this is just a doc. You can set this anywhere in your OBS menu. I'm going to now go place it in its spot, in its normal spot. And if you want more information on these, I have three videos for you. <laughs> three other links. It, I'm, I'm feature, oops, I'm feature rich today. Uh, so that's by a creator called Nutty. And he's made two videos on this. So there's the first one. Nutty's second video comparing uh, Restream versus Atom. So that's right here. And then uh, a fellow by the name of Andy Lippy also made a video. And that's right here. I will also put these in the YouTube description. And oh, who do we have today that said hello? We have. Chris, JD Lady, Urban Bohemian, yay! Oh, Rubber Ducky, let's see here, JD and Chaotic Holds and Presents. Hello, everybody. Welcome on in. Good to see you. So, that is the Atom vertical plugin. Let me double check my notes, make sure that's all I wanted to say about that. If you have any questions about that, please put them in the chat. It's going to be the way to multi-stream, I believe, in OBS going forward. Next, Stream Deck app for Android. Yes, please. Stream Deck app has been upgraded, upgraded and updated so that it matches what you can do on iOS. So now if you have an iOS device or an Android device, you can do the same things and have a remote Stream Deck with you. Now you can title it whatever you want. I named mine Android because, you know, there's for my iPad Air, there's my other stream decks and my Android. And you can see, I just set up the buttons. So you're gonna be downloading this software onto your PC or Mac first. And then you download the software on your Android. And then there's a little dialog box that pops up that says, hey, you wanna connect. Here's a code. Does this code match what's on your screen? And then you go, yes. And it goes, okay, we're connected. And you, and you have a little dance party because now, now you're full of happiness that, that your things are together. And so it works like any other Stream Deck thing. You set, set up the, but, the buttons here, what you want them to do. And now I have Stream Deck on my phone and Spotify. on and off. And if you're around yesterday when I tried this on screen, found out you do have to have your Wi-Fi uh, connected. And then you have all sorts of settings. Now you do get, I bought the full version, but you do get six buttons for free or you can pay monthly or there's a, a $60 lifetime thing to unlock the buttons, all the buttons forever. Uh, so you get to decide how you want to experience this, but the settings, Click the little cog, and you get all those fine settings there. Don't focus on me. Stop focusing on me. A layout, orientation, appearance, faceplate. So right now I have five by three, but as you can see, there are different numbered orientations there. All the way at the bottom, eight by eight. And if you want to set them individually, there's this option down here with the, with the plus and minuses. So if you want two by eight or whatever, you can do that. And then once I go home, <laughs> that's <laughs> 64 buttons, uh, <laughs> kind of tiny. But uh, if you had a tablet or something, you know, they would expand out. So if you need more buttons on your screen, or, you know, I could also turn it this way and oops, wrong, wrong turning. There we go. And I could use it horizontal or vertical. So you, and you can lock the orientation. That's what the, <laughs> just flipped again. So orientation dynamic means when you flip your phone, it will change orientation as you rotate your phone. Or you can just set it in one orientation. Have an appearance. You can have virtual face plates. You can even make your own. So there's a selection of virtual face plates there that aren't showing up too well, but I'll select one there. And a face plate. Ta-da! So you can, you can even add your own graphic to it if you want to personalize it more. And appearance, 
You can have it follow your system settings, light mode and a dark mode. Ooh, dark mode. And I'm not going to put all of my Stream Deck buttons on here. Just just ones I need as as I walk around and do things. So when I do my Gun Plus streams, I I have I have my Stream Deck. And I don't have to come back over here anymore. I can just hit the hit the buttons I need on here. Extremely handy. I of course love it because it's a Stream Deck and it's very easy to set up and they talk to each other and it's, and it's like a little bit of magic in 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 your phone your magic phone can one of the free buttons be a folder it can so you can potentially have more than six free buttons if you made a folder and then another folder in that one yeah and you can yeah so they do let you create create uh subfolders in the free version so you can have ideally more than six buttons and now that's available for Android. Yay! I see the scheming, right? <laughs> that, that you get six buttons for free is incredible. So definitely check it out. Again, Stream Deck is one of my favorite things ever. That's why I have three of them. and Well, f four. No, five, because I have the iOS version as well. So I have the Android, the iOS version, and the three physical ones. That, that's a lot of stream decks, but you know, they're, they're stream decks. They're beautiful. Streamer bot has updated how you can view your chat. So in streamer bot, you have this chat window right up here, right? And you click this, so streamer bot version 0.2.3, click chat. And now you get this fancy thing where you can see all your chat or your, just your Twitch chat or just your YouTube chat. The event feed, where I cleared the chat history, where I started the broadcast, or everything combined. And then if you go down here, you notice these blue things. I'm now when I type, I am going to both Twitch and YouTube. They are blue, they are lit up. I can send a message to all, or I can send a message to just if I just wanted to go to Twitch, I could toggle YouTube off. Like there. And then you have these handy menus like your command palette. Where you can execute an action, search for people. Do commands work through that window now? Uh, so you would go through, you would either put the command on, say, a stream deck and, and hit the button on the stream deck, and that would work. Or you'd go execute action and say, I want my website to come up. I'd go to the exclamation mark DC. And as soon as I hit it, now that command goes through. You can filter your events. So you just want to switch events. Uh, so you just can't, not with nil. No. Because if I do exclamation mark DC in the chat window right over here, as you can see, it just does that. Can't use it for straight text path through. Yeah, no. I, I, would, I would like it if you could, but for some reason you can't. So then that's when I go over to the, you know, I have the Twitch chat window open or I have Caster Labs open and I, you know, type, type them in there. Or I set up a button that executes the command on my, on my stream deck and then it'll just activate the command. I don't have to worry about typing it in chat or clicking these things to get the button to go. Uh, you do have settings. So font family, font size, these were here before, dark mode, here's where you can set the tab, tab chat, or your timestamps, you can even see the seconds if you want, and alternate the background color of every other message, and invert the chat direction. Quick actions are handy, I uh, got message quick actions, so if I wanted to give a shout out to someone, and you can set these to be whatever action you want out of your commands and then if you let's see i believe it like if i went over chaotic wholesome presents here i click the button i get to see all this stuff right and then if i go over here notice i have this little one right here and that's the action i just showed off i click that and it should execute uh that if that was working but apparently it is not but I'll, I'll give you a shout out in a second here. So if I had it set up right, it would, you know, it would do the thing for me. Yeah, so if, if you have them set properly, you can set your quick actions over here. And then you can reply, you can copy the message, more, and ignore, highlight, delete the message. 
Twitch viewer card, which you, you do, you click Twitch viewer card, this opens a new tab in your browser. It shows me what that person has for a banner, when they created their account, when they've been following me, and, you know, their badges, whisper, gift sub, invite, ban timeout, that, that thing. And then it gives me their chat history as well in a whole new browser tab. Yeah. So that's the update to DreamerBot chat. I do wish I could exclamation mark here, but I'll just make buttons because I do like the separation of chats and some of the other options in, in uh, this one. So this will probably be my, my default chat thing. Maps, D&D Beyond. Uh, this is still an alpha feature, but they've been adding things to it. And the latest one is for when you're doing spells that cover a sphere or a cone or a line or a cube. There's now a way to represent that in the maps. So I've already selected a map. This is the basic map stuff. You go over here. Now you have this overlays or you can hit the O key and you get overlays. Yay. You know, cube, sphere, cone, line. You can give it whatever color you want. And then say I'm doing a cone spell. I click it. I go, okay. My cone starts here and starts at me. And it goes out to 30 feet. So bam, now I have on the map where that cone is. I can change its color still. I can hide it if you're the DM. You can choose a pattern. So if this is a lightning spell or a thunder thing or necrotic damage or poison, you know, you can have little potions come in if you want or back to none. And when you want it removed, you just click delete. Now I, ha I have an effect that doesn't start on me, start say over here, and then you can also move it around. And then if you ever need to measure out, you can activate the ruler, go. Okay, so this sphere effect happens 30 feet from me, which is right here-ish. Or you could also just use the, the line, you know, 30 feet, yay, that's where the, my sphere starts. And then I can go to my sphere and go, okay, this square here, where it begins and it extends out. You know, it covers 20 feet you know, and it starts there. And so it cover all these people, right? And it's poison. Yeah. I, I, made, a, I made a circle of poison. But yeah, so that, that's the new stuff in D&D Beyond. All right, I will see you all then. Have a great evening and a good weekend.